He also accompanied many Russian films, such as The Sensation of 1924, the Soviet sci-fi melodrama that tells the story of gallant Russian rocketeers who bring revolution to the Red Planet. Ailita, Queen of Mars. It was exactly this kind of goofy and ironic music that he used in the second movement of his symphony. The second movement is a scherzo. It's a dance. It's funny. It's a spoof on waltzes. It's also an homage to one of Shostakovich's favorite composers, Gustav Mahler. Like some of Mahler's scherzi, it's written on the borderline of shtick. It's like a short film or cartoon about people dancing or trying to dance. The tempo is an exaggerated eins, zwei, drei, eins, zwei, drei, and it holds everything together in the goofy scenes. As we look around the dance floor, we can see there's quite a variety of types. There are peasants in their heavy boots. There's a neurasthenic, self-taught wise guy on his squeaky clarinet, backed up by the local band. And then there's a deluxe dance master with his little kit violin, and his rubato raffiné. In the middle of that movement, suddenly, a little ballerina starts to dance, given to the violin solo. It, it, it disappears again, and the, the toughness, the, the rude thing comes back. Everybody mixes it up until the rough crowd closes the joint down. Let's go back for a moment. How could Shostakovich, with his great natural talent for writing such charming music, get into such difficulties with the authorities? It happened because of his underestimating the changes in the regime. In 1924, Lenin died. And Stalin coming into power enacted policies for controlling artists that Lenin had imagined but never actually put into practice. For a long while, Shostakovich was untouched by this, perhaps because of the versatility of his talent. Some people were aware of him as an avant-garde symphonist, but Lots more, including Stalin himself, knew of him as the composer of 
popular songs. In 1932, Shostakovich wrote the theme for the movie Counterplan. The film's about a couple who fall in love while working in a turbine factory. The movie was a box office smash, and the theme became the nation's biggest hit and one of Stalin's favorite songs. It was perhaps Stalin's sentimental attachment to this song that later served to protect Shostakovich's life. What got Shostakovich in trouble was, ironically, the piece that at first seemed his greatest success his opera, Lady Macbeth of Mityansk. It was premiered right here in the Michalowski Theater in St. Petersburg in 1934. The piece challenged and excited the audience. The music was different and the plot was racy and exciting as well. Everyone loved it. Overnight, young Shostakovich became the most celebrated composer in the Soviet Union. The opera was an international success right from the start. And it's still being performed today. A success with everyone, that is, except Stalin. In January 1936, two years after its premiere, Stalin attended a performance of the opera in Moscow. Shostakovich heard that he was attending and rushed to the theater to bask in, he hoped, the supreme leader's approval. But Stalin did not approve. Seated in his box over the brass and percussion, he found the music raucous, screeching, ugly. And the action on stage was far too graphic for his taste. Most of the suggestive trombone glissandos had already been censored. But Stalin was thoroughly appalled by the whole production and ominously left at intermission. Two days later, the front page of Pravda featured the now infamous review condemning the opera and its composer. Muddle, not music, was the headline of the Pravda article, which read, from the very first notes of the opera, the listener is shocked by a deliberately dissonant, muddled succession of sounds. Snatches of melody struggle free and disappear in the noise. To follow this music is difficult, but to remember it is impossible. While the critics support socialist realism, Shostakovich's work presents us with the coarsest side of nature. Everyone knew Stalin had approved the article. Some thought he'd written it. And shortly thereafter, every publication, every political organization in the country condemned Shostakovich in much the same words. It was an unprecedented personal and public attack. Overnight, Shostakovich became a man living in fear. He thought about the terrible, unknown fate of so many artists, colleagues, and friends, and realized he was close to joining them. The black van would come in the middle of the night and people get arrested. And people were dealing with it. It was part of their everyday life. He never forgot the experience of being out here on this stairwell watching and bedding himself down here outside of the family apartment so as to spare them the actual experience of his imminent arrest. 